Hey guys, welcome to new tutorial series on unit test for Java developers and this series will be covering all the aspects of unit testing. For novices, this will be an awesome course you to follow and become a savvy. For others, I hope to touch some advanced topic later videos so you can get something out of it as well. So we'll be using these libraries or framework and later based on your ideas we can use different things as we go so today for kick off the series i'll be creating java maven project and write simple test cases in test driven development approach so let's get started okay guys so i'm in intel idea here so let's get uh, started by creating new project right so uh, i have selected maven and java 13 as the project test right so let's click next and uh, put the group id and and the artifact id right so let's use kebab case uh, for the project artifact id and okay so now i am in the project create a project uh i'll be using a plugin called maven dependency searcher so i'll uh, show you the plugin uh, that is this one maven dependency searcher right so we can use that to uh, add dependencies here so press ctrl alt r or else you can go to tools uh, maven dependency searcher right now you can uh, type a colon for the artifact and type j unit uh, Jupiter right so uh, the plugin uh, the uh, dependency I'm interested in is this one and I can copy the dependency for the main one by pressing this one right click and patch it so let's add uh, dependencies tag here and paste the dependency right so uh, another thing we need to do is uh, update the uh, maven compiler plugin right so now uh, the project is supporting java 13 so let's uh, create a test class first so because uh, i'm going to use a test driven development approach so first we need to have the test class and the test method beforehand the actual implementation right so let's create the test class uh, in the package right so uh, the class will, would be um, math helper right so uh, test class should end with test suffix so i'll put a math helper test as the test class name right so i have now this class let's create the test uh, i'm going to uh, test the factorial method i'm gonna try so uh, for right beforehand to the right in the method i'll need to uh, test it have the test because we are using the test driven development approach right so we can use assert equals to test the uh, input to uh, test the output uh, for the input we are giving to the method right so uh, press all the enter and uh, import static method we should use the assertions dot assert equals comes from the jupyter api right so uh, now we can press con uh, control p and see the uh, parameters it's expecting so we can pass int and int uh, for the expected and the actual so we are expecting one for the net helper dot factorial one right 
so uh, what we are testing here is uh, we should have a method called factorial and if we give one to the uh, that method it should return one so that's the basic idea so i'll put the test annotation here it's come from the jupyter api right now i'll remove the package private uh, uh public uh, modifier from the class because we don't need that in the JUnit file right so first we let's create the uh, package in the uh, java source directory right so now let's create the class in the source directory right next thing we need to create the factorial method right so right now we have the method and the test class so first we should have a testing uh, a failing test case so i think we haven't implemented the functionality so this test should get failed right okay we got the result a uh, failed test right so now we can uh, actually return one to pass this case test case right so if i run this again uh, we will get one and test will be passed right so in factorial uh, another case we should cover is if we pass zero into the method that should return zero right so let's run this again and it get failed right so according to that uh, knowledge we can pass one for the zero or one input otherwise we can return something else right so now this test case should pass for these two inputs right okay so uh, i should have one here right okay uh, let's run it again okay so another scenario i would say is five right if we put 5 we should get 120 right that's the factorial of 5 right so let's run this again and see the result so we uh, have expected 120 but we got 0 so let's uh, do the real implementation for this one right so return uh, i i multiplied by factorial i minus 1 right that's the scenario right so let's run the test case again okay all good so we have write the test case first and the uh, implementation segment right so let's try something else again uh, 6 for the 6 we should have 128 uh, multiplied by 6 right okay that means we have uh, correctly uh, written the test uh, or the implementation right so let's uh, put the actual value 0 uh, 12 2 1 7 right uh, so uh, it's 720 so let's run it again to make sure that uh yeah uh, i forgot to change this okay uh, let's run it again okay now uh, all good right so uh, another case is if we pass negative number it should uh, fail or the uh, it should throw some exception right so uh, let's write that test case right so 
uh, we can write that test case by uh, there's a new um, assertion called asset draws from the generate file right so as a toss we can put the assertion here i should draw illegal argument exception okay so now this test case should pass right because uh, there's no uh, implementation for the negative factorial numbers right so uh, we got a failed test because uh, it, it's kind of uh, we got actually stack of later because uh, it's got, uh, this method trying to evaluate for the negative numbers right so it, it won't stop uh, so we need to fail for the negative numbers so let's have a check for that one if i is less than zero we should throw illegal argument exception right so if we run this test again it should pass right so we have two tests one is for the um, one is for the success scenarios one is for the failing scenarios right so failing or the illegal scenarios now we have uh, created this uh, test class first and then implementation of the method later so that's the uh, test driven development approach so uh, that's it, it guys for this tutorial so let uh, from the next one i'll be uh, covering much much more uh, assertions and the uh, you know data driven tests or the multiple parameterized tests there are several uh, things we need to cover so first absorb that uh, what we did here and uh, make sure uh, that uh, we write the test case first so uh, we can be confident about our method uh, uh, actually implementation um, and uh, write a less bugged code i'll say so happy coding guys uh, please subscribe channel if you like this video and bye bye